What's going on, everyone? It's the one and only Mikey Pipes. I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. I am back. It is a little before 8 p.m. Sunday night. It is January 31st, 2021. Just got back from vacation. Literally landed about two hours ago, maybe three hours ago. Got a nice tan going on. Yeah, I'll show you that shortly. But uh, on my way to uh, save In the day. In 0.1 miles, keep left. On my way to save the day, we have a Burnham gas-fired boiler. She's a power venter, and she runs for a second. She turns off. Uh, the other mic was there a little bit, uh, a few hours ago. Keep and, left. Uh, doesn't have you know parts like I got, but uh, we'll get it up and running. So stay tuned, guys. I'm back, guys. Here's one of the 26 percenters behind me. And we are working on this Burnham. So really, it got me going for a little bit. And my, my client is saying, listen, you should get the, the, the camera rolling. I was like, listen, not every service call is like in 7 to 15 minutes. Usually it takes a little bit of time to figure out what's going on. And this one really had me stumped. Um, Power Venter Burnham S-I-N, sorry, I-N-6, 175,000 gross BTUs. This is your thermostat relay. This is your blower relay. That right there. This is constant 110 volts going out. This is coming in. This is 110 volts going out, right? And at first I suspected maybe it's a thermostat relay. So we jumped out the thermostat over there. Still no change. Then I'm then I happened to touch the pressure uh, switch and it kind of did some noise and went from there. And then I'm just checking voltages and I looked at the electronic ignition module by Honeywell, now Residio. I don't know why they did that. They licensed out their name like that, but whatever. So the homeowner was playing with the manual for quite some time. And I was like, you know what? Let's go to the manual. So I go to the manual, we go through all the steps and you know, does the blower energize? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. So we'll go to no, and then we go over here. And we go through all these troubleshooting steps. Is the water level okay? Uh, is the pressure gauge, the pressure control set? I already bypassed that, wasn't doing anything. Do I have flame um, continuity across my rollout switch? Yes. Do I have 24 volts at the relay, right? And there's a little error right there, but you go down here, 24 volts at the thermostat relay, one and three, which is here, right? Those the blue and the gray. And I didn't have 24 volts there. And I'm like, hmm, safety circuit issue. So the next thing is, right, do you have 24 volts at the pressure switch, right? And, sorry, do I have, uh, da, 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 no, hold on. I lost something here. We skipped a step. Oh, so we had, we had 24 volts there, sorry, right? And we went to the pressure switch. There was no voltage there, and boom, now we're at the low water cutoff. And I look at the low water cutoff, right? And as soon as I like touched the cover, it started to um, behave itself. Now let's watch this thing start up, right? I got my pressure switch back together. I have the new uh, thermostat really there. We'll put the other one back, or maybe we'll change it, who knows? But it'll go through a startup uh, cycle. All right, still auto resetting. But, of course, now it's not gonna do it. <laughs> we wiggled it too much. We wiggled it too much. And we did the wiggles. Fixed it. We fixed it, but she, she needs a new low water cutoff. Let's see if we can duplicate the problem again. Let's put the cover back on. Trying to beat the snow. It's gonna be cold. See, and there we go. So Mike G was leaning towards blower relay, right? And he put into, and he calls me, and I was like, Mike, like you have another uh, a fan center relay in your truck? And I was like, like, well, what's up? 
And he goes, listen, I replaced two of them, and then I need a third. It's not, not, it's not right. And I was like, Mike, don't be a parts changer. We're not parts changers, right? And if the first one doesn't work, right, and it's brand new in the truck, what are the, uh, the failure rates on the brand new out of the box failing? I see what he's doing there. And look, we're good there. I'm just manhandling the low water cutoff, but that's what we need. New low water cutoff. We'll get it from the truck. Only half the house got hot. <laughs> so I had three different plumbers come out. So it took out the the, it, the it took out the, the steel piping. It was one inch copper two pipe system. I don't think it was original because my neighbor had the same house next door and she had a cast iron monoflow. Copy. So somebody at one point must have replaced it. It was probably leaking. So anyway, I had two plumbers come out. They wouldn't even go near it. The third guy told me time and materials because he has no idea how long it's going to take and if it could work. I'm going to change this probe. I'm going to change the probe. I ended up doing a whole job. Monoflow. Copper. Okay. And I used... One inch, inch and a quarter? What did you use? One. Okay, good. And I, and I contacted Bell and Gossett, and I had their engineering department help me. I told them I'm a homeowner. <laughs> you guys helped me, and he said, "Yeah." And I already had the EDR chart, so I figured I sent. He said, "Send me all the." You're, you're an engineer. You must be an engineer. Well, the computer guy, you know. Yeah. So I redid the whole. I'm gonna thing. get a. I want to get a bucket and a pipe wrench and some dope. Give me one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, you got a cap on there, huh? So Mikey pipes fixed it. Yeah, I told him. They go on YouTube. Yeah, so I, that's why I got my hands wet. I never did any kind of real soldering before, so a friend of mine had one of those, uh, I guess, one of those acetylene torches. Yep, VTEX. Uh, so I used that. And I went back, they got back to me and did the only thing they told me how to do the pipe spacing. I basically broke the boiler down, repiped it, get two pumps, uh, two zone pumps. Okay. Spiral vent. I had to replace the whole thing. They were very good, I tell you. I, I was and, you and you kept the cast, the cast, the cast iron oh, red, yeah. right? And then, he, then I went to the supply houses and they were real. I don't know why you have such a big boiler here. Well, it would help if they insulated the, uh, the steam header piping. And put a small boiler, a boiler in it. <laughs> Because it's, what is it, the ranch, right? No, Cape. The Cape, yeah. 1,200 square feet. Yeah, 1,200 square feet with a huge boiler. We did one, We did an IN6 about a month ago. Yeah. The guy who had the, the fish tank pump yeah. on, his, on his workbench, <laughs> he got an IN6. Yeah. And his house, three times the size of this one. Well, I have a friend who lives in Garden City, a three-story house, I don't know, over 3,000 feet. Uh huh. And they have 175,000. Exactly. See, a lot of guys, they take out something. Let's say it's 175, and that's what they give you back. Because they don't, they don't know how to do the math, or they don't care, or they're just lazy. But I'll never oversize, grossly oversize a system. It's just not right. Well, I was in out. Just leave the windows open. Right? Exactly. Like you're in an apartment building. <laughs> it's all good. What are you talking about? It's a nice How often do you drain the boiler? Never. It's never been serviced. I hear it. Well, it's not that terrible. It's not terrible. So I get a little more water out of it, and then we're gonna pull out the probe, replace the probe. Yeah, we should be good right there. Below the water line. All right. Let's see. Get a wrench on that. One-handed Mikey Pipes. <laughs> nah, it will be all right. There you go. You know, because if I didn't, if I don't, if I don't change this, what my luck is going to be is going to die. The, the probe is going to get some dirt on it yeah. tomorrow. And then plus, the, the people on YouTube will criticize me. Yeah. They're like. They're like the YouTube police and the stop sign police.
But I changed your mind. I don't think I had two pieces. Yeah. Uh, listen, if... no, Listen, the probe... Listen, it should be cleaned, you know, once a year. No one cleans it ever. But... I'm changing the lower to cut off. It comes in the box. So you're getting it. And I didn't blow through any stop signs to get here. Good. I was <laughs> ask you that. <laughs> you my a little bit more. <laughs> But I love, see, look at that. Not so dirty, All right, but it's a different type of, it's got the float on there. I love, I love making these videos, by the way. It's fun, <laughs> it's fun. But let me tell you something, my office, and this is not an exaggeration, I get about 30 calls a week. Yeah. I saw your videos on YouTube. And? And then I have a local, some of them. Maybe about 10, maybe maybe seven or 10 yeah. a week are local. And then there's, they're in my uh, the area that we service. But yeah. I got people calling me from like Pennsylvania. They want service? They Delaware, New Jersey. They're like, come on, please come here. I was like, listen, what are you, out of your mind? Yeah. Like, you have to pay me a fortune yeah. to come out there. Because what, for a two-hour job? And I have to drive all day? I like, get out of here. But people have been asking me, like, well, listen, why don't you do like... um. A uh, virtual support. Yeah. No. I was like, yeah, okay. There's a thing so called. Steve it's, Lab complains about. Yeah. People call them up from all over. They want to know what they should do. Exactly. I was like, listen, time, time is valuable. Yeah. All right, this has got to go upwards, so I'll make sure. See, I was happy I found you. The oh, first man. video, I said, oh, that's a, that's a Long Island so, accent. <laughs> like, I'm used to Steve with his Boston accent. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, Steve Lev. I learned a lot from that guy. What? He's a good guy. Except I'm blocked on his channel for whatever yeah, unknown reason. I've been watching him for probably four or five years. Yeah. I just want to get a little extra on this. So if he doesn't like your new stuff, you're never touching that anymore. Yeah. And I love him. I got two in my own house. They work great. Yeah. And as long as you take care of them, they last. Yeah, I was thinking, I got a 17 year old water heater and my boiler now is a. Uh, 17 year old water heater? My boiler's from 85. Yeah. Is it really? You mean 95? 90, no, 85. It's an old well McLean, a CGI. Three or four. But it's like new because I redid it all. I need to go up a little bit more like that. Okay. Everything on the outside can replace the spark plug and gas oh, yeah? valve. The gas valve went when I moved in. That sucks. I should probably have you check the combustion and we never did that. A long time ago. <laughs> yeah, if you ain't checking, you're guessing. Years ago. I didn't have, I don't have that equipment. I didn't, yeah, I didn't it's have that stuff's expensive. It died in the middle of the winter, and Blackman had it. I picked it up. Gotta set this just right. So I need to go down a little bit more. Probably went bad with that circuit board and that sensor. Um, there's a wire actually. It's a printed circuit board. Yeah. These things, uh. Yeah, no, no, it's... You know? They don't last forever. All right. 
We'll connect this flare up. All right, let's fill her back up. Just pulling cold water. We'll bring that up about halfway, a little more than halfway. While we're waiting, turn that on. Do a self check. You don't put any uh, Teflon on that, just dope on the probe. She's taking her sweet time now. Here we go. The motor comes on, pressure switch proves the draft, and we have ignition. We put the, uh, the relay in, clean up. So that was a pretty good service call, you know. It almost, though, uh, that's at Burnham Steam Boiler was kicking my butt for a little bit. Honestly, for about 30 minutes, it was kicking my butt. And then I was like, you know what? This is, ins this is insanity. I'm doing, a, I'm doing the same thing in different parts, but expecting different results. And you know, at the end of the day, I popped open the manual and followed the flow chart and followed, found the problem being the uh, defective board on the low water cutoff. So I replaced the low water cutoff with the probe, put on some dope on there and got my 26 percenter up and running this evening. And as you can see, it's snowing. So time to go home. God, well, God, um, may God bless. Keep you guys safe out there. All right. Mikey Pipe signing off.